Hello. I know I said I was going to make a video about writing and stuff, and I still want to do that, but I realized that I just bought a couple books yesterday, and I think the first thing I want to do is show you guys those instead. A few weeks back, we celebrated Independent Bookstore Day, which is a day that uh, indie bookstores across North America uh, put on a party, uh, people come by and, and buy books and show support for uh, independent retailers. And uh, I wasn't able to get out to my local bookstore, Audrey's, here in Edmonton this year, um, but I asked them to put aside for me a copy of an exclusive title that you could only get on Independent Bookstore Day, and just the other day I was able to go pick it up. So that's the first thing I wanna show you here. Uh, the book is called I Dated Graham Green, and it is uh, by Lucy Ellman. I'm gonna show it to you right here. And it's published by the excellent Canadian publisher, Biblioasis, who I am currently writing a book for. And uh, Biblioasis is also about to publish Lucy's um, estimates vary from what I've seen, but it's either a 750 page one sentence book or a 900 page one sentence book. Uh, it's called Ducks Newberry Port. And uh, that's all I know about it. I'm very excited to read it. And uh, as kind of a teaser for that, Biblioasis made this uh, very limited edition of uh, a story of hers. And Biblioasis made, if you look at the back here, you can get uh, the details. It says they made 1,000 copies in support of Independent Bookstore Day 2019. My copy is number 333, which is lovely numerically speaking. And uh, the book itself is, uh, it's kind of a chapbook. You can see it's got um, some string sewing it uh, together. There's the knot there in the middle. And the story itself reads like it was written maybe for the day, it, uh, the day itself. Um, Lucy writes about feeling anxious in bookstores and gives a list of um, bookstores that have shown up in movies over the years. And it ends with this kind of comment that gives the, the chapbook its title. I was very excited to get this. I love Biblioasis' stuff. And uh, yeah, I wasn't able to get in on the day itself, Independent Bookstore Day 2019 but uh, my local held a copy for me afterwards. I'm very happy for that. The other book that I picked up the other day is the latest work by the Canadian cartoonist uh, and illustrator, Seth. And uh, if you don't know, Seth is, um, his real name is Gregory Gallant. And for the last oh, a couple decades, he's been making comics under the pen name Seth. Um, his stuff is really beautiful. Um, his illustration style is really distinct, uh, very clean, and very nostalgic for kind of mid-century uh, Ontario architecture. And I have a couple of his books uh, previously, which I'll show you here. This is one of his titles. It's called The Great Northern Brotherhood of Canadian Cartoonists. Uh, Seth also does a lot of design and illustration work for others. So most notably, uh, he does the uh, covers for every issue of the magazine. Canadian Notes and Queries, uh, which Biblioasis, who published uh, I Dated Graham Greene, also has a hand in publishing. You can see the, the style's really fun, really playful, and uh, really distinct. I think you know right away when you see something that Seth did. Biblioasis also puts out a series of ghost stories at Christmas time, and they individually package them. I think they've done three or four per year for the last couple years now, and Seth does the illustration work for that as well. Uh, and they're Again, just absolutely beautiful. Um, kind of spare, there's not a lot of extra detail in his drawings, um, but they're, you know, they use a lot of different colors. Um, they're not really limited in that sense. And again, he's able to apply his style to a lot of different types of material. And I think um, it kind of uh, tickles the collector part of my brain for sure. He also did the design work uh, for this commemorative edition of Stephen Leacock's most famous novel, Sunshine Sketches of a Little Town. Again, it's, uh, you know, it's full of his distinctive illustration style. Uh, you know, iconic pictures of trains and things like that. Really beautiful stuff. The new book by Seth is called Clyde Fans, and I'm holding it at a distance that maybe doesn't quite show how monstrous this thing is. Every piece of it, you can see here, oop, there we go, is uh, designed by him. 
you know, there's no detail too small for him to leave a stamp on. It's put out by Drawn and Quarterly just this month, and uh, when I heard it was available, again, I saw Audrey's had a copy in stock, and I ran down to make sure that I could pick it up and bring it home for myself. The story itself of Clyde Fans is, uh, again, takes place in, in this town in southern Ontario, the kind of territory where a lot of Seth's work takes place, and it's the story of, um, you know, an electric fan business that slowly kind of goes out of business as we move towards the present day and you know everything and um, modern retail and capitalism kind of goes haywire so it's a it's kind of the story of this business over time I'm gonna show you some of the details here because again it's just absolutely beautiful hardcover inside this outside layer is a slip case of course inside the slip case uh, has been designed as well when you look at the book itself uh, again this will be familiar to anyone who's seen Seth's style before but it just instantly kind of fits in with the rest of his universe that he's created. Here's the cover, Clyde fans. You open it up, and it's a bit of a cutout hole. And then inside, you know, again, he's trying to create this universe of, uh, of this town and this street. So you get a lot of pictures um, from the town. This is as if you were to get a company calendar from the company back in the 60s or 70s. Um, it's called a picture novel. This work was actually serialized over a number of years and some other work Seth's put out and it's finally been put together all in one. Love this page, this is mascots that they've had over the years, uh, including some stuff that you're not gonna get away with in 2019, like uh, having Inuit characters dressed up as cartoons, but you know, given the historical period, I'm guessing that's what he's going for there. If we flip ahead, I'll show you, you know, there is actually a story that goes on over the course of 500 some pages. I can't wait to read it though. I'm a huge fan of all of Seth's stuff and his his design work is really, really excellent. I think a lot of people will have recognized, uh, seen him do that before, but his writing as well is really strong, really subtle. Um, I can't recommend it enough. If you're interested in learning more about Seth, the National Film Board of Canada actually made a documentary about him a couple of years ago. It's called Seth's Dominion, and you can find it on the NFB website, or I think it's on YouTube as well. It's really fascinating. It shows, you know, how much work ethic this guy has and his vision for this kind of universe that he's slowly building out one piece at a time. Also goes into detail about the actual paper town that he's building in his basement, where he's reconstructing this fictionalized landscape in three dimensions in his basement out of paper and cardboard and glue. Uh, it's, it's wonderful. Uh, okay, that's all for now. Um, thanks for watching and for such a nice welcome on the last video. That was really nice. Uh, hopefully we'll talk again soon.